Oh crikey, I forgot to bring down what I need to bring down. I'm going to be back in a couple of minutes. Or a minute or less. A minute. <laughs> right, this is a better way to turn up, have all the audience sitting there waiting for me to arrive. Pull back the curtain. So hey everybody, how's it going? You all looking good tonight? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, that's a good joke there, buddy. Good to see you too. How's the kids? Great knowing you. All right, let's get over with the bullshit. I mean, oops, can't say things. Anyway, right, first thing I need to say is that I received a uh, very nice contribution today from Rescue Mark. Where is he? Is he here yet? Yeah, yes, here he is. All right, finally from the UK. I received this. Now, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was lamenting because I had been complaining to Wero that one of the problems that we have with the standard drivers is that you can't really tell what they are. They're all very much generic in appearance. So, um, yeah, they've got the same... Yeah, unless you're actually looking at the tip, you can't really tell. And I said, you know, it'd be nice if they were coloured and if they had identification on them. It was just lucky that uh, Wero must have already been on the bandwagon. And so I've got this marvellous thing has turned up. So it's a very loud. Here we go. Check it out. They're all colour coded and marked. Let's go to the overhead. I almost feel bad for using these now. I mean, I know I've got to, but yeah, it's a really nice kit. The only downside is that it doesn't have the PL4, which I'm still going to have to use the Weha for. So, uh, we're a good job, but uh, where's the PL4? The other one that they... I don't think they've gotten here is the Tri-Wing. Or do they? Yes, they've got the Tri-Wing. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, they got the tri wings, so that's for the iPhone sevens. It's the only orange one in there. It would have been nice if they included the next size up as well, which you use for the MacBook batteries occasionally. But really, yeah, it's a good kit. It's um, nice to have it all in one set. And I mean, I'm particularly going to be using the socket drivers, and it's nice to have the hex drivers as well. Like it's got a, it's got that 0.9 millimeter hex drive that. Uh, yeah but yeah very very cool very nice thank you very much mark i really appreciate that they almost didn't get it delivered but um fortunately being a smallish town they worked out who i was so um if you're thinking of buying a new set of drives uh drivers i'd suggest this one here um the carry case is really nice it's going to be a little bit tricky maybe you know taking them in and out I may end up even buying myself another one of these, which <laughs> I gotta be careful because I'm starting to stock up on lots of wearer stuff here. Uh, I've still got to. Uh, I still have to give away this one. This is the iPhone or the mobile phone kit, which basically contains quite a few of these, but in a different stand. So I better get my act into gear and get that one given away too. But yeah, uh, this is a really nice comprehensive kit. It's expensive, I agree. Uh, here in Australia, it retails for around about 270 280 with tax. 
but I think when you see, what is it, 25 drivers in here? I mean, that works out just a little bit over $10 a driver. Still seems a little bit expensive, but these are good quality tools. It's nicely you know, consistent, it's coded. I think it's definitely worth the investment. Get it done in leather. I wouldn't be doing that, but what I would do is probably get it done in a uh, wood block or maybe yeah, something like that. Once I get my workshop done, I'll uh, see what I can do. Is the stream stuttering at the moment? Because I've noticed mine's playing up. Yeah, really nice. Hey, Richard Moore. I love the way that they've got this, you know, sort of stitched on identification thing. And I did notice it comes with a Velcro back on this. It's a bit hard to see it here. So you can, there's a um, opposing patch that you can just stick somewhere on the workshop or whatever and you just throw it up on the wall and it'll stick there. So whenever you've got to rush out, you just rip it off the wall and away you go. So yeah, thank you very much again, Mark. This will definitely come in good use. I won't be using it probably tonight, but, uh, ooh, I just, just got the, man, that's loud. Just notice it's got, uh, what do you use these for? These sort of like little fork tip things. Hmm. I guess you can use whatever you like lever out something, forcibly remove a JTAG, that's removing BIOS chips, rivet popper, that sounds more realistic, thank you Arnold G. Yeah, definitely it's a, yeah, something you throw in the, um, what do you call it, the trans up, the travel one, like I've got a travel bag here for doing jobs off site, so that's why I'm thinking it might be worth me getting another one of these and having this one in the travel bag or whatever, vice versa. And then the, the other one just separated out and put into a stand. Maybe safety screw. Who knows? Oh, well. You could use it to lift out strip screws. That's another option. Yeah, you get... I usually use a uh, flat blade to get under them. I know what you mean. You leave it under the head and then you keep screwing. Okay, uh, we've got to finish up this. This was the banana drenched MacBook and I never quite got to finishing up testing the keyboard that I remember. So I'll just quickly do that because I need to quote the poor guy to complete the job, see whether we need a new keyboard or not. And I'm wondering why did I not finish this job properly. What, what did I miss? Did I forget to ultrasonic it or something? Questions that need to be answered. Ah, I see the camera is out of whack. Sorry folks. Hey Hux and Furious D, hey, 3X. Hey, Jim's here too. Good, you made it Jim. Let's see. Okay, I don't have any screw. Okay, so that's them. Now remember, there was no SSD in it, so we're going to boot from our external. Hey, Andre, Nikita Net. Looks like we're all. Shouldn't you guys all be working on a Friday? Come on, it's, I'm the only time zone that should be slacking off at this point. I suppose the upside is a great majority of you probably work for your own business, so you have the advantage of ignoring what you should be doing in order to maintain some entertainment in your life. Side entertainment. That's oh, good to know, Nick DeVette. Actually, do people say your name, or do you say your name, Nick DeVette or Nick DeWet? V O W. Australia seventy seven. Yeah, uh, let's see. This is gonna be turned on. Uh, 
Dropped you a second. I think I got no oh, yet another one. Nick Devet. Okay, cool. Because it drives me insane when I see people take the Dutch-based or German-based name and actually say the W as W rather than the V. I'd like to send you an when I click on the dollars it says not allowed in your region. Ah, oh, Andre, I'm not sure why. Oh, you mean with PayPal or... Um, if you go through PayPal... Let's see, where's my thing magic? I'm just waiting for the screen to come up. If you if you have PayPal, do PayPal. Thank you, Jim. Jim saves the day once more. Oh yeah, I forgot I've got all the Bitcoin, LTC, Ethereum, and all that sort of stuff. Hey, author thing from Oklahoma. Slovakia. Wow, that is a interesting place. Okay, we're still booting. Equix, yes, I do do board repair. I'm just um, cleaning up on a existing job at this point. That's why we're doing what we're doing. There we go. Sometimes you've got to tie up loose ends. Query Postma, do you have wallets for those crypto? It converts automatically. I have wallets for them. I do have a crypto. I have an account with an Australian um what do you call it, Australian crypto host or whatever. And so I can always convert them to a, back into dollars if I want to. But more often than not, I just keep shuffling them around or keeping them as a fail safe. Usually I'm keeping um, Litecoins or Bitcoins. Okay, so we need to test the keyboard on this. I have a feeling we did, but... 1502 Where can I find you? Equix, I don't actually have a... Hey, what's going on here? That was kind of weird. Is that my... Ah, that's better. Alright, now we can go somewhere. Keyboard seems fine. Okay, that's great. No troubles at all, in fact. Andre, thank you. Let me uh, see. You can always send a message on there uh, if you want. Uh, let's see. Why are people calling me honorable? Is it meant to be... No. no, Gmail is the correct one. The vanity domain is not something I use very much anymore. Full stop. I'm doing a live stream right now if you want to come on and complain. Full stop. Just telling my Discord followers to complain if they... Right, yeah. Can you read the full fault description? <laughs> Basically, uh, Dave, what happened with this machine when we originally did it was the person put a banana in their backpack and unfortunately the banana, as they do, was forgotten and it melted and turned to that sort of very 
viscous but syrupy sort of um, consistency and it went through the logic board and everything else so we're actually there's actually still remnants of it over here we cleaned it up it seems to work okay that's what I'm thinking I was doing I was actually trying to test to see if the ports were working so that one's obviously working fine let's try this one see if that comes up seems to be doing something hey Bailey yep. I don't know what it's doing it's got power but oh, I keep going for this mouse when really that's the mouse to the okay what about that Oh, this is the one that we had to do the... Okay, that one I think is dud. Doesn't seem to like that. It looks like it's caused it to crash. Oh, Mark, it's good for your health. All right, something did has gone wrong. Uh, that's not the sort of thing we want. So it was this side that got mangled by the banana. Okay, I'll shut that down. It could be that the USB port is a little bit too damaged. So we'll flip over to this side. Boot again. Yeah, it had a lot of junk in those ports. And some of them we weren't sure if they were going to be any good or not. We did fill them up with um, the contact spray. But it may be that there's damage internally within the socket. Uh, let's see. Pray regarding new drivers a little earlier. I'm not sure. Did he mark my name for it? Uh, Andrew says they will not just change the leads, they want to change the whole meter. I'll stuff that. Uh, Prater, can you um, send the question again? Sorry. Easier if I just wait for you to s send it again. Sounds like you guys are back to normal. Oh, uh, yeah, well, we're probably not going to stay that way for long because we've opened up the borders and now everybody's going to come pouring into Queensland. And uh, I dare say we'll start seeing the first cases pop up in the Gold Coast and then Brisbane. And uh, so then maybe the southeast will have to be cut off. Maybe now they'll actually divide the state into and Rockhampton can be your northern city and we'll, um, we'll make Townsville the capital of North Queensland. Oh, oh right, yes, um, that's... Um, feel free to post a link with the description of all the tools, yeah. I haven't had a chance to put the new Wera toolkit in there. It's an eBay link, is why. Oh, okay. Well, there's. Let me get the Element 14 link. In the meantime, let's see if this works. 
Okay, so that works. I think just the USB port is a bit cactus. Okay. What is this? Where? Damn it. Craft form. I'm going to, if I order this by price, that should help, because it should be up top of the list. Oh, they're my dedicated downvoters, don't worry about them. It's hard work being who they are. You've you got to say hello to them, be thankful. Wow, this is a bestseller already. Interesting, the price has dropped quite a bit. Okay. Here you go. That's the Element 14 version. Alright, so that works. The USB port is a bit iffy. I think, realistically, I might tell the person that it's probably not worth trying to actually fix this USB port more than what it already is. It's already been ultrasonic twice. It's had contact cleaner through it. If we try to replace it, we'll probably just do more damage than what we're going to fix. Um, we do have a very perfectly good functional USB port on the other side. This one does intermittently function, but um, yeah, it's, I wouldn't call it a dependable port. It may actually behave better over time, just as you know, maybe it wears clean or something like that, or just vibrates clean, but. Yeah, I'd say better to just accept the small hit, given the amount of damage that was done, than trying to make it perfect and ruining things further. Hey, Jill Fraser, how's it going? Alright, so we'll shut this one down. And we'll get on to an actual repair job now. Oh, had a link of it. Well, it should be in the um, data sheet on that page at least. I'll have a look at it and see what that flippy lever thing is that you're talking about. Okay, so we'll put this back into the shelf and at least we know what we're dealing with there. Uh, I've got far too many languishing jobs here. It's embarrassing. Where's the where's the fresh for the day? Here we go. Okay, fresh for the day job. Next one. Okay. Ah, uh, looks on to me. Discovered I'm not Australian. Struth. What am I gonna do? It's got a crack in the screen. Please do not have a crack in the that has got a whopper. Oh, it's a screen cover. Thank goodness for that. Well, this camera is... Camera pointing business is crap. Come on, Paul. Be a better cameraman. I wouldn't mind something like an a, a Sony A5100 or A5200. Something that I can actually get some good resolution in here. Okay, so the story with this one. The last couple of days, computer went from shutting off after about 20-30 minutes without a charger to not being able to boot without a charger to not being able to stay on. For, okay. Let's see if we can validate that. Uh, Christian, no, not a word. The only thing I heard from Lewis today was talking about some um, more serious things. Not, he doesn't actually talk to me that much, really, at all. But he said to me he hadn't had a chance to look at the... Oh, okay, so booting. That was some fast moving there. The battery has an alert symbol on it. It's not a cross, it's an actual alert symbol. 
touchpad is there's no given that okay shut down okay with an alert symbol that's interesting I definitely think we're gonna crack it open and have a see what's going on there someone at Rossman repairs me monitoring the incoming phone calls hi hi nose anyway um, Anel did say that he was had got it But they probably decided it's not worth harassing Lewis over it. Hey, Steve K. Hi, hi, might know where a good camera is and acquire it for you. <laughs> it's still Lewis's. I would then also have to acquire a HDMI capture card. And I'm looking at one of the two or four port Magewell ones. That's a pretty big investment, but I think I need to start investing my money into things sooner or later. Maybe after I bought the house. Missing screw there. I forwarded the voicemail to Lewis, but with his email... Yeah, exactly. I mean, the guy's flat out. Maybe you can just put it over the speaker system. <laughs> okay, battery has inflated. So that's going to have to come out. I'm just looking at it's a 2015, so it'll be a 4924. I can smell the battery. It's you know, it's a very distinct smell. Of lithium packs. Hey, toes taken. Good day, English hedgehog. Ooh, I just got that out. Hi, hi. The trouble is when you call my number, I ignore it because I can't hear very well on the phone. And you're probably thinking, well, why the heck was I calling yesterday? I called yesterday because I figured it would probably go to voicemail. And so it could be a very nice one-way conversation with me talking to the voicemail system. If someone had actually answered it, I probably would have hung up real quick. I would have hung up so fast that would have made you running away from Rossman Repair Group initially when you were trying to actually go there look like you're a sloth. Remember the number of times we had to try and push you to go in that door. In fact, I actually called Lewis when you were nearby and I said, Hi Hi is out the front. And that's when he ran out and he captured you and ruined your ac academic career. Hey Nick Basie. Jack Daniels needs to make a comeback. Yeah, I put him to rest when I came back from Africa. He's still over there somewhere. Still waiting to be unleashed. You can't hang up a call from Hi Hi. He's the verified tech got a Rossman group. I'll hang up on that call. <laughs> Hope you do another one in a few months. Huh? Uh, they probably will have my number on ban list by then, which means I'll have to get another SIM card or something and. <sighs> Maybe I'll pretend I'm ordering pizza. I'll ask for a pizza with pineapple. Well, that is been a very difficult camera connector to get out. Normally you can just use your fingernails and get them out, but that one's decided it doesn't feel like doing that. A burner phone, yep, that's it. Go the way of uh, Bourne, Jason Bourne. Have a bunch of burners on hand. Slip them in the pocket of someone walking by. Yeah. 
Oh, believe me, I, I love pineapple on pizza, yeah. My favorite is, um, you take a Hawaiian type pizza and then you add salami and olives to it. I know, I know, it sounds terrible, but it's nice. For me, it's nice. I like it. Become an estate agent to, confu or <laughs> to confuse Lewis. <laughs> Okay, I've got to get this out still. It's, I'm not sure why it's been difficult, maybe because it's stuck still. It's the first time it's ever been lifted, probably. Well, uh, Travis, how do you feel about um, bacon and banana on pizza? It's a very good hangover mix. Works nice. And how do you think people felt about avocado and chicken pizza originally? Now everybody loves that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I see Luke's a um, adamant hater of the pineapple. Seriously, Travis, bacon and banana—it's—it's it's a revelation. When you yeah need it, it's it's not something you'd have normally every day, but it's definitely a nice combination. <sighs> okay, so this took a little while to get out. Honestly, nothing's jumping out at me. I'm wondering if it's just a really bad battery, but that doesn't explain. Yeah. This is going to be one of those ones that make me go around in circles for a few weeks and then finally decide there's nothing I can do. Hey, load em. I make my own tomato base, mix marmite and cheese on top. Mm, that's just weird. Tomato base, marmite, and cheese. All right, my good sir, you have out done me on that. Don't get me wrong, I like marmite. I actually miss that from when I was over there, all in South Africa. Vegemite's nice, but it's got a little bit too much sharpness, whereas marmite has that a little bit more roundness. Isn't high high mod worthy i don't know it's tough to say he, he could be a sleeper agent for all i know hey zane romberger yeah, i've been keeping busy been keeping busy let's see all right let's have a dig around on this so we're looking for something that is doing weird stuff with the timing, the duration of power on. So what is this? A 2.9 gigahertz, 8 gig machine. So it's, it's not bad. It's sort of like upper middle range. Kind of like upper middle class Bogan. Where I too one day hope to achieve in social status. Right now, I'm just lower class bogan. Okay, nothing really obvious on there. Hans Molina. Yeah, I think I'll drop that on my toe and that'll be the end of me. I'm certainly not worthy. <laughs> that you might as a devil skull. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be done right, though, you know. Good amount of butter. Appropriately thin helping. you still got to have some solidified butter on the toast. I don't approve of Australians tricking other people into eating overly thick layers of Vegemite. I think that's... While it seems to be hilarious to them, I think it really doesn't set a good precedent. I know it's a hilarious joke, but it wears thin pretty quick. And 
Uh, wow, that's some uh, serious hairs there. Honey and Vegemite sandwich. Oh my goodness, Jessica. Yeah, maybe... It's kind of like the uh, chocolate and biscuit companies coming out with all sorts of crazy combos and using the customers as uh, basically as victims. I'm wondering if this is actually a fan fault. As in the fans overheating or something. I don't think there's actually any real... It does not look like there's proper damage. I'd say it's a combination of a bad battery and a choked fan. That's my guess. Bad battery, choked fan or something. Between Hi Hi and Copaz, who'd be the best mod? Uh, I plead the fifth. Oh, Tim Tams and Cherry Rub, yeah. Quite right you are there. Not the bad rectangle purple chip comment on those. Which one are you talking about, Arnold G? I'm not aware of anyone specifically on that. I mean, there's not really enough lint there, but it could be a bad fan. Like, let's see, let's dig this... Even that's not really enough. Fan spins. Looks like there has been some kind of liquid around here. Yeah, I'm getting confused on this one. I don't think Paul S has ever visited this uh, stream. Not that I can blame him. The guy is a professional. And professional people don't watch streams. Violet Crumble, yeah, I gotta agree with that too. I mean, I know some people, not mentioning certain wives I have, prefer the crunchy, but um, that is a poor excuse of a chocolate bar. Violet Crumble is what it's meant to be. Hey, Pernov, been a while, like a couple of days, I think. I don't know, at least track of how often you're in here. Hey, Cleve Freeman. Hmm. Being a 4924, naturally I'm not going to be able to run any real test suite on it. The only thing we might be able to do is put this back in the chassis, fire it up, see if it uh, overheats in a hurry. Eight two zero four nine two four. Sam Bergen, thank you very much. Oh yeah, ice cream. I made a mistake last night. I made too much ganache, so unfortunately that went to waste. I couldn't completely cover the ice cream with the ganache, so I offered it to my wife. She was going to eat it, but then I think it was about 3.30 in the morning, we just fell asleep. <laughs> Durian flavoured ice cream. That's probably not the worst ice cream. I mean, that's certainly something you've got to get used to. Durian, durian. I think once you kill your nose, then you're probably off to a reasonable chance of being able to consume it without gagging. There's a few people around here that crack open that fruit every now and then and it's you can tell there's no subtlety about the the wafty aroma that comes across the neighborhood.
You need more ice cream to get the ratios back. <laughs> uh, well, we... Okay. Wasn't expecting to see that. But even still, yeah, sure, that's... That's really linty. That's so linty that would probably clean up my source code. Ah, program was joked there. Actually, I shouldn't say it will clean up my source code. I should say it's so linty it will have an opinion on my source code. And there's probably a whole heap of people going, no idea what you're talking about, Paul. Hey Pedro. I'm just brushing out the lint and letting the fume hood take it to a place that I don't want to look. Yeah, it's not so bad. It's a little green, but the contacts are actually not too bad. Right, so basically back into the chassis it goes. We run the test and see what happens. I know, I know. We were hoping to get some soldering done. Don't worry, I've got a second machine here that we can look at that needs probably some soldering. Yep. Yeah. In. Okay. Yeah, the battery would certainly explain half the fold. I just feel like it's a two-fold scenario here. I'm not going to change that just yet. I want to see if it actually does heat up or not. How's the mortgage? I <laughs> I haven't had a chance to do my financials. It's really bad. I'm desperate to... I've got the money there. I've, I was going to say that it took a while to switch back. I've got the money there. But i get got to get my financials in order. Like just the paperwork so the bank can see what I have been earning, what I've been spending, that sort of stuff. And I do have that, but it's not in a format that they accept or they understand. Instead, they just look at it and sort of go, well, we have no idea what any of this means. Or at least this doesn't make sense to us. Why do you not have this, this and this? It's like the business doesn't run that way. It could be the daughter board. I can see a whole lot of junk on there. Let's take the daughter board out. Is it difficult being self-employed in Australia? Overall, it's not. Overall, it's actually a very simple thing. It's perhaps the simplest way of doing business. It does have some liability issues that some people may find difficult to um, take on. Basically, you are personally liable for things. Whereas, if you're obviously, if you're a company, then the company's liable, and you're sort of you get yourself a bit of indemnity. But if you take out appropriate insurance, and it's not that expensive for most company, uh, bus most businesses, then it's not a bad way to go. It is a little more costly on the tax side, but only if you start earning more than about 150, 160,000 a year. Below 150, 160, you, you're still better off pretty much being a sole trader. Um, above that, then you start creeping above the 20% company tax level. And even then, I'd probably wait till it gets about the 25% before worrying. 
because there's a lot of convenience in being a sole trader and that you just you don't have to do half the reporting that a company needs to be doing uh we've got some nastiness up in here so i think it's actually the daughter board um here yeah, i'll give you a sync clap there you go instead of a cough clap a golf clap it's a sync clap hey furco Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yuckety, yuck, 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 yuck. That is a slightly gnarly looking USB connection. And that Wi Fi looks like it's someone has had a Mardi Gras. And it's after 4 a.m. in the Mardi Gras and blah. Yep. <laughs> I haven't seen that much fuzz since no no just shut up no. what is in there that is bizarre yeah I'd say we just replaced this door to board I don't really like the look of it it's, uh, it's certainly it's going to be influencing the system powering off and stuff like that well I mean we will wash it out but uh, yeah a bit gnarly it's not a smoker's machine, it's that I can tell. It's just had some kind of bizarro... I don't even know what it is. I'm worried if I touch this stuff, I might become the next face hugger victim. Certainly if I chip away at this stuff, it's going to... It's sort of like burst open, like fruiting fungal spores get into my brain, make me climb up the nearest, tallest grass stalk and wait for my inevitable death. Yeah, it could be, this is really where the damage is. This in here is not so much a problem, but this is, this is because it's gone into this area. The Wi-Fi card might be okay. We'll take it off and have a shot. Looks like a dead worm. Yeah, colourful one at that. There's definitely an aroma with it. I'm not sure what it is. I can't place it. Yeah, no, this is... I've smelt this before and I just can't place it. It actually smells... Yeah, I don't know. It'll come to me in a nightmare. No, it's not a roach nest, thankfully. I think it has a pretty good chance of being ultrasonic. It doesn't look like it's corroded anything, so it's oilish. Yeah, I'll say we throw it in the ultrasonic for a, a few sec, uh, a minute. The trouble is, I don't have anything to hold it with, so I'm going to have to. Uh, maybe I'll run a loop of wire, top and bottom there. Hold it up to the... No, I... <laughs> yeah, have a sniff of that as it is. Oh, let's see. Wow. Okay. Some, use some good old wire wrap wire. 30 gauge. It's not going to fit in a tea strainer, unfortunately. I do have a tea strainer for the purpose of small objects, but that's not going to work this time around. Pedro, did you get those parts yet? Uh, 
Now this is this is my old style crystal radio antenna. Okay, we're only gonna put it in for a short while. True, yeah, you are hot. Time. Two minutes should do it. I should have thrown this in. One of these might be okay. I have the ultrasonic work and not hurt the board. Um, it's just... Yeah, good question. It's because the board is still considerably harder than what the um, cavitating bubbles can cause in terms of damage. What the hell? Hello? Where are those caps gone? Come on, heck. And I bought these from the United States. Fingerprints. Free fingerprints. I see it's finished. Have you changed the fluid yet? No, I have not. I might never find that uh, daughter board again now. <laughs> oh, come on. Oof. Paper toweling off the Wi Fi. Yeah, Steve K, I've, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've checked these before and they've all got at least one issue with them, so I guess it's a case I have to find the one with the least issues or the issues I can manage and go from there. Wow, that did diddly flip and squat. I don't know what that oil is. I mean, normally I do ultrasonic for quite a bit longer, as you know. So what I'm going to do is I'll go for the uh, alcohol scrub and see if it lifts up from that. The US is not on your repair items. Oh, the ultrasonic, right. Um, yeah, because I, when I got that, um, it was Wayne Taylor who sent me the link to it. And it was the last one they had. And I've never really followed up on that since. I think the problem is that with the ultrasonics, there's just too many different suppliers for the generic ones. So all you can really say is eBay, 22 litre, good luck. My drying oven is a pizza oven, 
it was a 19 inch pizza oven I think it was yeah it's a it's a decent sized pizza oven and then I just created my own little temperature controller unit for the outside of it it uses PT1000 elements rather than thermocouple I just always find the PT1000s to be I just always prefer them over a thermocouple easier to interface with I consider that to be more dependable overall as a complete system especially for the r temperature ranges that I'm working in okay we're going to throw this in the oven because there obviously is going to be a lot of liquid in there and see how that comes out that's a nice way to waste 20 minutes in there I'm actually going to leave that daughter border in to soak. Okay. We also need to take this battery out. The battery is doomed anyway. So we might do that while i am still got some semblance of being awake and functional. Swapping batteries out is probably not an ideal thing to do when you're half asleep. do that we really do need to clean the bench off a bit uh, there's a lot of dust that came out of that machine that'll just add to the lint on the floor and the floor will get cleaned when I replace the floor you think I'm joking I'm not <laughs> just make sure there's no sharp spiky bits Just refresh if you're having any synchronization issues. Okay, we take out the speakers and then we get this frame out of here too a little bit. So the battery is actually also screwed down. You want to get that out. It's frustrating that with these models they have um, used the bonding when these points here, these little mushroom headed plastic nipple things, they actually have screw holes beneath them. So it's like Apple was originally thinking, yeah we're going to just screw it down like a 1466 or so but it seems they chickened out either that or marketing said no can't make it that easy for people to change them you saw what happened with the 1466s and similar it was too easy make it harder is cleaning the whole computer and the ultrasonic cleaning a good idea no things like the keyboards um, microphones Ooh. A lot of those sort of things do not tolerate getting wet or being ultrasonic. Okay. See, YouTube is going to start inserting multiple mid roll ads into all the existing videos unless you tell them hands off. Oh, crikey. I hate mid roll ads. I did see a notification about that, Greg, and I just thought it was actually an opt in. I didn't realize it was a opt out. I'll have to go and do that because I can't stand mid-roll ads and I don't want to subject people to them. Let's see. I'm just looking for my appropriate string. Dave James put up a video on it today. I suppose you can always just notify people and say Turn off the mid-roll ads. Job done. This is a new wax string I have. This is uh, 0.65mm. The original one that I had was 1mm. 
I still have the one mil, but I want to try the 0.65 and see if it cuts through better. The spool isn't as nice. The colour's prettier. Hey, Zane Romberger. Respect for not having mid-roll ads. Oh, yeah, I mean, it completely ruins the flow of everything when they do that. Actually, I'm doing this the wrong way around. With these packs, th because the adhesive strip runs vertically like that, you want to cut downwards. So you're cutting uh, the short um, the short distance of the strip. Short width, whatever you want to say. But if you try and come across this way, then you're going to get the full width of the strip. And yeah, that's actually going to be quite a bit hard to do. Okay, first thing I've noticed with this new string is that it is actually really hard to get it to lock tie. It's not as easy as the other one to lock onto the wooden stick. Cuts through dead easy though. Oh yeah, that's easy. Easy peasy. This is probably the hardest part, just getting it down into the slot. Come on. And I think I'm going to have to change my handles for this because this spool is no fun at all. Anyway, that is pure bliss. Yeah, that is not hard at all. That just come. That's like going. Heck, I've had butter that's harder to cut through. So, seeing it for the first time here, folks. First time I'm using this 0.65 stuff. And because it's pink, it makes it go faster. This is the real trick area doing this inner section. Red would go fast again. I agree. I've ordered red, but um, COVID has see, seen to it that it takes forever to get here. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll call this a tool. <laughs> Uh, if only. I, I just need to m get myself a couple of um, fishing net repair spears or whatever they call them. You see them in use with real, with people repairing nets. Yeah, because I'm having more trouble just dealing with the yeah, my bigger trouble is just dealing with the handles more than anything else. The batteries are dead easy. Okay. Nice thing is this is actually quite safe too. Yeah, you don't have any sharp metal wire or anything like that, risking shorting anything. I mean, not that it would, but yeah. Risk mitigation. <laughs> I think I've caught the wrong side of the plastic there, actually. Yeah, I did. There we go. That was the easiest I've ever done a battery. 
And that was with the inconvenience of bad handles. If I spend five minutes making a pair of nice little wooden handles, this would be definitely the greatest stuff I've used so far. Do you say e-waste? No, I just um, give it to them. Um, yeah. It's pretty expensive recycling stuff in Australia, so I just give it to them. At least they can uh, do it. When we mass produce that tool so we can buy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One day, one day. Let's see if I can... I do have a razor I can cut this up with, but uh, yeah, I'm going to need the razor. I need to buy a few more razors. And proper handles. This one's getting a bit blunt, unfortunately, and as a consequence, periodically the glue doesn't come up right. But most times it does. Still doesn't look all that easy though. Um, I think yeah, if I had the proper handles, you know, decent handles, it would seem a lot easier. There is a certain degree of awkwardness of just simply getting the um, thread to go down and behind the packs correctly. But it's certainly, we'll put it this way, it's vastly nicer than trying to do it using playing cards and alcohol. You go watch people try to do it on YouTube with playing cards and alcohol. That's not pleasant at all. Okay, it's done. Roses? What did you do? Ro so what? What? <laughs> what roses? Hey, I repair it all. Hey, DJ Craze. It's getting away from a video of a guy modding an iPod to two terabyte space. Why? Uh, why do people do that? Uh, so we've got all this junk in here. That's just probably should be blown out outside. We've definitely got more of that bizarro corrosion, whatever it was, it going on in here. They're lucky it didn't get into the screen assembly. Yeah, which uh, the Wi-Fi and the camera. Okay, moving me the screens over here. All right, we'll put the board back in. Uh, hmm, trying to decide how to take this one. We've still got about seven minutes to go on that drying process. Yeah, this battery here is cactus. The rest of them are okay, but uh, that cell's gone. Did Lewis get my voicemail? No, he has not yet. It's Hi Hi's fault. Sorry, I'm just blaming anyone that's within close range, and I figured, well, you're pretty close, so I'm just going to shoot wildly from the hip. That's what most people do on the internet. No one fact checks or anything, it's just shoot off your belief and hope that uh, no one fact checks you.
It's always high high. Well, high high brings it on himself. Is that that? He's a skittish little creature. If you catch him around, it's like a leprechaun on too much caffeine. Uh, leprechauns is the first thing that came to my head because my wife and I were talking about leprechauns this evening. I don't know if Hi-Hi looks anything at all like a leprechaun for that matter. I bet I could still make a nice firework if you stab it. My stupid self had to try on a laptop so the videos checked up. <laughs> uh, I always worry about doing that because of the fumes. So you get a good whiff of that uh, burn off smoke and you're going to feel crooked for a day or two. I suppose it depends on how sensitive you are. Then again, if you live in places like New York, you're probably used to the uh, level of carcinogens and whatnot in the air, so it probably isn't a problem at all. Oh, crikey, where did that go? Right. We've got ourselves a, lo a lost screw. Uh, there it is. By the way, when if you do replace one of these batteries, do not lose a screw that goes into this point here for the battery plastic assembly. Because there's basically no other screw in the laptop that matches that. Right, I need a T8 there and I don't have that. Ah, stuff it. We're going to be testing for thermal. We're going to see if it heats up. I have a feeling now that it may be not be that. I have a feeling it was that daughter board all along. But we're going to double check it. That's terrible, Paul. Yes, uh, there is a T8 in that. Yeah, I was meaning there's no... I was missing the T8 that sits under the end of the heatsink. There's a receptacle screw or a screw that has a screw in it. Screw hole. Okay, let's flip this over. Let's plug in our test drive. Plug that in, option. Let's tilt the camera to watch. I don't think we're booting. Are we booting? We're not booting. Are we? Yes, we are. Oh, there's no bong because I don't have a speaker connector. Oh. Michael Chan, Nihoma. It is doing the hard drive check. Let's see it. Flicky, 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 flicky. I'm doing well, thanks, Michael Chan. Friday, got some jobs for the weekend, got plenty of other work to get done. Alright, maybe it's not going to come up. I plugged in the screen, didn't I? Let's go at it again. Well, we, we've kind of got the red and blue blinky instead.
I know why it's slow because it doesn't have a battery when you don't have a battery in these things they get really upset uh, let's see which battery are you? you're a 1582 so we'll get a spare 1582 and plug it in so it stops whining like a little prat Pardon me. Gotta make sure you don't take this back plastic and whatnot off, otherwise you'll accidentally bond your battery in and usually at a completely inappropriate location. Ah, here is the real reason. Oh, no one can see. Here is the real reason why this wasn't working because someone didn't connect that. And if you're wondering what that is, it's the keyboard connector. Amazing how such a simple connector can change so much. Once again, the audience has failed me. I didn't hear any cries from anyone saying, you didn't connect the keyboard. No, you just sat there and watched me make a fool of myself, didn't you? Starting to wonder now about my audience. Yeah, thanks Prater. Ooh, it's only about five minutes too late. Nice try, nice save. I didn't plug that battery in. Ah, Chris Long's here. To what do I owe the displeasure? Come on. Chris Long, did you know that uh, Lewis Rossman considers you a leader? in your field of repairs. I was reading a document today and he's explicitly stated that you're a leader in your field. Of course he doesn't explicitly say what field that is, but you're a leader. Yes, you Chris Long, you. I noticed I was conspicuously absent in the document. I guess he didn't think that um, being a leader of Australians was worthy of much. You don't know about that. You're a novice, right? Yes. You do CPU swaps, don't you, these days? Isn't that all the rage? It's like the new age SMC replacement, uh, not SMC replacement, the new age TriStar replacement. The phone doesn't work. CPU swap it. No time to practice, probably can. Nothing. Yeah, there we go. We've got a. Yeah, you can see the screen, so. I've got enough things like iPhone 6s and 5s and things like that. I could give it a shot, but. Um, I mean, no one really does it with those anyway. And I imagine that the process will change depending on what CPU you're using. Like I believe the iPhone 6 probably is one of the most difficult ones to do. Paul, you made open board view. Yeah, Zane Romberg. I didn't make it myself. I mean, I sort of commandeered it and added a great deal to it, but there were multiple people who had hands in it. The six is one of the hardest. Yay, there you are. I'll get my um, leader status there by knowing that. What is that screw tub called? James Robson, you're talking about these things? They, um... Ah. Uh, see if I can find one that's got a sticker on the underside of it still. 
Not you, not you, not you, not you. I get them from my electronic supplier. They're made by uh, Duratool. But they're awfully handy. The nice thing about them is that the compartments are... Um, they're sealed. They're not just little floating partitions. So when you shake the... When you shake it around, your screws don't go into other compartments. Uh, yeah, the last thing you want to do is go screwing in other compartments. Uh, I have pretty much ripped the stickers off every single one that I can find around here. Let's see. Oh, is that one? Yes, we have one here. And who are you? What's your problem? Oh, I fix, right. You have the laptop that isn't actually faulty. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, looks like this has got a code of... This code is ART101CTN. So, no. Uh, let's see. They're made in Italy, funnily enough. They're not made in China. That's nice. And as you can see, I just flipped that over and it still managed to retain everything. Okay. So this is going. Let's check the temperatures. Temperatures are good. Alright, so I'd say it was a combination of the battery and the daughterboard. We'll run Valley just to see if it chokes. Those containers are on Amazon 15 compartment hobby boxes. Okay. So long as they are the ones that have, like I said, they're welded down the bottom. Like there's no... You can't pull these partitions out. It's actually moulded at the bottom. That's the key difference between a lot of them. Okay, Kristen, thanks for dropping in. Post a link. Let me see if I can find on my supplier. Uh, let's see, CTN 101. No. 15 compartment. Still think Lewis is the best choice. Oh, yeah, I mean, the guy is phenomenal. He is by far the best user I have access to in all the glory of the term user. There we go. Mark, I think the trouble with those ones is they're adjustable. Yeah, those ones, they've got the separate petitions, Mark, and that's why I don't like them. Whereas these ones that I've just linked up, they have no separate petition. Well, they've gone up in price. That about doubled from what I used to pay. I think I bought them out a couple of times. <laughs> Not moulded, but never have stuff move. Come. Oh, well, yeah. Fair enough. You're content with them. Okay, frames per second is good, temperatures are good, power consumption is pretty much online, what I expect for a half filled battery. We'll just give it another minute or two just to see if it shuts down, but I think, um, I think it was definitely a bad battery combined with the bad daughter board. So I'm not a user, but I've been quite picky and complaining a lot when I don't like it. Ask Microsoft what they think of me. <laughs> uh, I mean, there is always going to be bugs in software. That's any reasonably uh, featured piece of software is going to have some sort of bugs in it. I think about the least buggy software I know of is probably the uh, um, the tech. Uh, rendering system, the uh, typesetting system. 
and that's been going on for nearly well over 30 years now i think uh so in spite of all that time yeah there's still the occasional bug that comes up and then of course every time you add a new feature you may expose a whole it's kind of like rain washing across a landscape and it reveals a whole new layer of things that you probably didn't want people to find yeah clay lay tech yeah, well tech really i mean tech being the core engine I use LaTeX a fair bit, and uh, with like with the leader's books, that's all done in LaTeX. Ah, see, Panov, you should love LaTeX. It's right up your alley. Hey, Aussie Geek, how's it going? What is the app to the temps? Uh, it's called Hardware Monitor, HW Monitor, but. It actually goes by the name of hard HW sensors. Let's see, hardware monitor. Yeah, about hardware monitor. Yeah, there you go. You use it, but you hate it. Really? Okay. I find it very convenient because you can generate a lot of the documents and things like that just by programming, and the quality is just beautiful. I think that's the thing with tech that I love so much is that, yeah, it is a bit of a pain, a bit like using Vim, but the output quality is just fantastic, especially with the justification of, you know, the word space and the kerning, all that sort of stuff. If you become a bit of a font and um, typesetting appidentio, you do get to appreciate a lot of the subtleties that tech, you know, brings for you. After you get used to tech formatted documents and you go back to something like Microsoft Word formatted documents, Word just feels like you've gone back to the 1980s or something like that. It is just horrible. The language and usability are garbage. Oh well. <laughs> well, you can always use likes, the LYX. That's not a bad um, compromise. I gotta admit though, I cry a little bit though because I'll generate the books well, with, you know, in tech, LaTeX, and the print copies are great. But then when you gotta go and produce um, the ebook version, it just goes back to you kind of cry over it because you think, oh man, you know, you know what it looks like in a print version, and you wish it could be just as well um, sorted as the uh, print version but I mean ebooks are pretty good but you definitely do notice the compromise yeah th I mean yeah you're right the syntax is a bit trash I guess predominantly because they started out you know way back 30 years ago and they've tried to expand within it but I still consider it tolerable ah oh, Pernod of course you've been at university have you you've done your dissertation already, haven't you? You're on your postgrad, aren't you? I can't remember the off, sorry. Reading, reading, reading. I really don't think this is gonna crash. The amount of damage on that daughter board pretty much was a smoking gun and the fact that the battery was puffing up. So in the end, this person's probably going to end up paying about as much as a normal board repair, except instead of a board repair, they're getting a daughter board replacement and a battery. So they still walk away with the same sort of um, pocket hurt, but it just was done a different way. Loki, I can't read a nook on screen. I can read information or troubleshoot devices that way, but I can't read a book for hours on a, oh yeah I can't stand reading I mean e-ink devices are not too bad particularly the new ones with the I think they're up to 300 or is it 300 or 220 dpi it's not too bad I couldn't find a master's thesis topic so I ended up going with terminal master's the terminal master's degree what is a terminal master's degree sorry I mean I don't mean to sound stupid I'm just not sure what that is yeah I don't think this is this is 
good. Um, Dubs tune. Keep up the good work. Have a beer or ice cream. There'll be an ice cream since I don't drink alcohol anymore. The only alcohol I get in my system is through the um, ethanol or isopropyl when I'm cleaning things. Terminal master at my university means you don't have a path to... It. Oh, right, okay, so your master's is your final... Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Interesting, I've just never heard that um, term before. I'd imagine a lot of engineering um, degrees tend to be terminal masters. At least if I understand what you're saying. I haven't done what you can call a master's thesis since I went for an engineering degree, but going for a PhD right now. Oh, okay, well then Pernov just blows that theory of mine out of the water. It's Do you smoke then? So, nope. Uh, <laughs> um, chocolate, coffee, snakes. You know the lolly snakes? I ha I can't have them really. I mean, every now and then, maybe twice a year, I'll buy a packet of lolly snakes and I will devour a 250 or a one pound bag, I suppose. Is it one pound? No, half pound bag. And I'll devour that within 24 hours, and I really shouldn't, because yeah, once you get up near 50, you really should not be pushing your um, pancreas like that. Survived the harsh of love, grown man, some alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a sugar guy, yeah, but I'm also a bit of a reformed sugar guy, so I don't like my coffee sweet. If anything, I'd say I'm more of a fat guy. Um, I like my cream in my coffee. You know, I, I like butter, that sort of stuff. So sugar and butter, how's, sugar and fat, how's that sound? Everybody happy now? I'm not Mr. Perfect by any means. I do have my vices. Sour noodles. I haven't tried those yet. Mm. Do the lolly snakes taste like chicken? No, <laughs> definitely not. I do have a gripe with the uh, lolly snakes in that my favourite flavour is the orange, which is it's yeah it's a bit of a bitter sweet. And in almost every single packet that I get, they have maybe two orange, maybe three, and the rest are just like port wine or green. I, mean, I don't mind green either. <sighs> so it gets really frustrating because you enjoy the first quarter of the packet maybe. And then the rest of the three-quarter of the packet is really just feeding your addiction because you can't stop yourself because of the fact that it exists in the fridge. So at three o'clock in the morning, you wake up, you stagger out when you should be having a glass of water. Instead, you go and you grab a lolly snake out of the bag and it's not the flavor you like, but you still eat it because it's the sugar that you want. So yeah, bad habits. <sighs> All right, so that one's done and dusted, really. We'll just put a new battery and a new door to water in that, and it'll be good. <sighs> Am I out of slots? Sort of, not quite, maybe, perhaps. Yeah, here we go. I'll do a swap out for you. I think I'm going to have to get the guy who makes these shelves for me to make another dozen. Okay, next machine. There we go, beep. Sim oh, my wife's here. Do you like the candy orange slices? Uh, not so much really, they're more the, the crystallized sugar type things. I mean, I don't mind the jubes, so like the jelly soft sort of things, but snakes are really my thing. Simba bowls through the house, getting cocky. Which half of the house, Alita? Like, um, our half or their half? Should make Alita a mod. She doesn't want to be a mod. 
taking on mod status means certain responsibilities and she doesn't want to have those responsibilities. Our half, oh crikey. Damn, you right up there, you need my help? I guess if you're um, on, on the computer, you're okay. Even still, it's not really what I want to be hearing happening while I'm down here, slaving away. What's this? 143 starts booking up. Okay, that one's done. Our uh, leader, um, Mark Rescue, is the person who sent those screwdrivers to me. He followed th me through the house straight away and I got him out of front. Oh, thank goodness for that. What's your favorite crisp chips? At the moment, uh, it's a toss up. Uh, salt and vinegar is always nice, but uh, at the moment I have a combination of the brand we have here called Kettle. And I like their plain chips, uh, two third ratio, along with one third of their chili chips. So you, yeah, I make up a bowl mix like that. And um, if they've got the chili mix right then it's quite difficult to stop eating those yeah I get spoiled by a lot of people here oh why didn't anyone tell me the camera was oh whacked So being a mod is easy. You get to make fun of Paul and he gets to threaten to remove your mod status and then it's back and forth. Huh. Since when have I ever threatened you, Chris? About the only person I've ever threatened is Lewis. That's because he comes in here and he tries to steal all my dedicated followers. He's not content with his 1.2 million people. He's got to have more. He's got to have more. Right. Alright, that was not a good idea. The battery has been punctured a little bit because the screws were placed there and then, yeah. So uh, when you ship something to me, don't um, ship the screws on top of the battery. The battery might be okay, but I can smell it. It's venting slightly. Uh, let's see, what is the fault on this anyway? Lewis doesn't steal followers. It's true, he does. He always steals them. He sends them private messages and spreads mistruths. It's his MO. Let's see. Came in for battery replacement. Wasn't lasting very long. Battery's been replaced. Custom brought it back because it was turning off during boot up. Okay. CPU looks like it's been messed with. Try another battery, same issue. Notice when I disconnect the trackpad flex, it doesn't turn off. Keyboard issue. Try a new trackpad, new flex, same issue. Still could be a keyboard. And there's corrosion around the motherboard. U1950, C1264, no, no, blah, blah, blah. Issue persists. Alright, and down the bottom it says send to Paul Daniels. I don't know how I'd feel if I had 1.2 million followers. Got to come with its creeps. Oh yeah, I mean, you're going to have the ones with the um, passion for dremeling your head. Someone out there is going to be a hobby trepanner. And they're going to want to use you. The power button is slightly depressed compared to the rest of them. I suggest maybe sending it flowers, a bit of chocolate, perhaps playing some nice music, and maybe you'll feel less depressed at the end of the day. But yeah, this battery has been bent and distorted. Okay, get this battery disconnected. Hmm. Screws missing, screws missing. 
I guess that's in the baggie. Alita, I already made you dinner. Come on, what more does a man have to do every year? Dinner, once a year, made by my own hand. Isn't that enough? Unrealistic demands. Richard Moore, yes, I do pretty much always do that. Of course, I don't tend to narrate it so much because there's no audience, and I, I gotta admit, it does feel a little bit funny talking to nobody. But I will still have some terse information, particularly if I feel like it can't be picked up visually. Is it your strong hand, Paul? What? Okay, it's a joke. What? 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 What hand? Uh, listen to Joseph. I found you on his channel, but I think you are more down to earth. Well, I mean, he is... Oh, you said you made dinner with your hands. Yes, yes, yes. I made... It's probably something people wouldn't appreciate the flavour of or understand, but I made um, tuna pasta, but not in the, like, slop that you see being served up in many places. Very different. Now I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to initially test this battery off. You know, see if this boots... See what it does on the. Uh, see what it does on the power. Uh, for the, oh, this is another 2015 too, by the way. Um, for the tuna pasta, I use sort of like half-inch wide egg pasta, uh, handmade egg pasta, and then I have olives, tuna, and they get fried together. Not until they're crispy or anything, but they get fried in oil and salt. And then that's added to the pasta along with parmesan, proper parmesan, not that powdered trash. Uh, along with garlic and more olive oil. <laughs> um, parsley, uh, not the frizzy leaf stuff, the actual proper parsley. Uh, what else do I... Oh, and cayenne pepper. Yeah. Gotta have the cane pepper. No anchovies, no. The salt the salty bite really comes from the um olives that have been baked in the salt and oil. They're the squished olives and chopped up, so it's olive meat really. Okay, is anything coming up here? Nothing. Frizzy pass, uh, parsley, I forget the name of what it is, but um, I much prefer continental parsley. Hey Jason, how's it going? Might be one of those odd days where I need to eat breakfast. Ooh, that's a rare one. Have we got a boot and logo yet? We've got nothing. We've only got 23. Oh, that's weird. I had to press the power button to get that to kick. That is weird. This should self-start. Parsley, rosemary, wine. I thought it was parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I'm just seeing it now. No, it, um, okay, so you can induce it to boot, and it will boot every time, like it will commence booting. And you can see it's going up, you know, 600, 400. So it looks pretty normal, but then it uh, shuts itself back down. Yeah, there it goes. It's down. Okay. Taken off. Just had to tell you about Simba. You didn't see my Facebook. Oh, sorry. Love you too, sweetie. And um, we'll have, I'll have to have ice cream tonight again. Um, this time I'll try not to make too much ganache. Okay. 
Okay, if I disconnect this, he reckons it stops failing? That's kind of weird. SMC or ISL? Let's hope it's an ISL because I'm in no mood to do an SMC. Alright, so this is self booting. Let's see if it stays up. I'm just going to make sure that power monitor was going alright. I still haven't received my multimeter either, so I'm a little bit cheesed about that. Because I know people in the UK have gotten their mon uh, multimeters. Um, Andrew, was it? Emailed me today, today to gloat about it. Oh yeah, Alita, Chris Long is one of the um, elders of the repair industry. He's younger than me, but um, he's an elder of the industry, if you take the IT crowd meaning. He lives in Kentucky, so you know, take it as you will. It's a bit dubious. We're not going to come visit Chris, you're going to come visit here. And then we're not going to actually see you. We're going to tell you to go to a hotel. And we'll meet you for five minutes at the local coffee place, and that's it. Alright, so it's definitely something with the trackpad, because we are getting a blinky. So why would a new trackpad and new trackpad cable cause this thing to shut down? It's probably because it routes the keyboard back through that and then this is where these are a pain in the butt machines so we'll see whether it's a keyboard or not by disconnecting the keyboard yeah it's Australian hospitality mate what do you expect from us I'm not gonna put you up in our house hell no our house bugger off Hey, micro mage repair. If you're rich enough to get over here, then you're rich enough to get yourself a nice fancy hotel away from us. <laughs> you might have cooties. I don't think that's a might. You do. Yeah. US cooties. Yeah, powered up straight away. So I think what's happened here, judging by the fact that this is still running, is that the they ended up replacing the wrong end of the chain. Um, that is where these machines are a little bit queer, uh, weird. I don't know why I said. We've got the flashy photo. Yeah, it's where these machines are a little bit weird, quirky is what I actually wanted to say, but I was thinking quirky and weird, and it came out the word I didn't want to say. Um, just the way that the keyboard signals are pushed through on the trackpad cable as well. So by disconnecting the trackpad, they broke the chain, so it would stop it from shutting down. But it was a link too far, rather than coming all the way back to the keyboard. So I'd say this is basically just a buggered keyboard. I'll have a look at what they've done in terms of the repairs, because they have done some electronics repairs. That soldering and stuff, and I'll have a look at that to make sure it's okay. I mean, look, honestly, it's understandable that it doesn't make sense when you think about it because you're like, well, there's a keyboard flex going into the board. Why the heck would it have anything to do with the trackpad? I completely agree with that uh, sentiment. Uh, Clay, honestly, at this point, I'm just buying top decks. I'm just buying pre-assembled keyboard decks. It's just less work. And the only reason why I'm pulling this apart is because I know the person. I just want to have a look at the the work done and make sure there isn't anything glaringly obvious there. Um, I don't know if it's that they're on the same hub. I think it actually the keyboard signal gets um, intermixed in the trackpad that there's a controller in here does something to it uh, processes it converts it into whatever it wants to be i2c or i'm not going to say i squared c do they use usb star controller i believe they do yeah i mean it starts out 
as one and then flips over to the other. Well, I look like Lewis Rossman who would know this stuff. Pernov can tell you. That's why he's here. No, yeah, it's actually not a bad idea, um, theory, that one, Chris. Yeah. There is some merit to that madness. It's not really madness, I'm just... Oh, yes. Look. Looks like it came in there and just forked out like that. Let's have a look. But yeah, it's not an entirely dumb suggestion that you've made. Killed a MacBook Air 3.2 with the SPR clip. Whoops. 3.2... How old is that thing? Ah, the damn heat sink's being bent on this one too. Yeah, bottom is greasy. Yep, agreed. I'm sure we'll find the work. We'll just follow the grease trail. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, this is going to be a pain because it means I'm doing absolutely no soldering work tonight. Oh, hot air. How depressing. Oh, I, I did do... Um... I did do some programming changes. Now, you know I'm always griping about people inadvertently buying Flexboard View when I feel like they shouldn't be because they think that the, uh, what do you call it, um, <sighs> board views and stuff should come with it. And I'm sick of people putting in claims to PayPal saying that I misled them or that sort of thing. Yes, it happens, I know. So I upped the game on my website, and so I'm kind of curious as to what level more on. Micro came not working, thanks. Why did you stop switching? I can fix that. No, the ta th that ta uh, tantalum is okay. One's lasered, one's inked. Oh, come on. How can you lose the chip? Sorry, please stand by. Technical difficulties. Ah, we're alive again. Uh, Jimbo, the trouble is just, if I had 4K, I'd do that, but um, I don't. But yeah, at 4K, that would actually be viable. Uh, I'm just trying to see what they said they changed. U1950. Okay, so it is. Okay, so they changed this up here. This one here. Interesting choice. What is the change? CO890. Okay, so that's the PCH power, okay. Interesting. C0890. Uh, not so much fun as the things in here have been changed. Uh, 
Alright, yep, you can see that those ones have been changed. It's actually very difficult to get these parts to reflow because they're right under the sort of CPU PCH area. So there's a massive amount of thermal heat sinking going on. So it's very hard to get a proper reflow to occur. There's no point in me disturbing it. Visually it might be a little bit like off, but um, uh, I really can't see any compelling reason to disturb it. And that seems fine. So at this point I'm just pretty much going to have to tell him it's actually the keyboard that needs replacing. Yeah. I'll have a look over the rest of the board, see if there's anything else that got skipped. A little bit of greenish corrosion up here, but nothing important. Uh, how bad is that? Two machines in today, and both of them are non-board fixes, probably. Well, there's going to be some backlash. I'm going to be hit with a flurry of thumbs downs for this one. You can see the comments now. Was promised a board repair, delivered nothing. Zero out of five. Not happy, Jen. Yo. Yeah, but the heat must have been put on that other side to get this to happen. Like I said, it is difficult to get those caps to, those parts to uh, reflow in that area. What do you charge for a keyboard? Uh, at least twice whatever the machine's worth. Let's see, 4K internet bandwidth, probably saturated four camera strip. No, I could do, um, right, the damn, come on. Have I got a magnet on there somewhere? Hmm. Oh, oh well. Does that mean you don't fix them? Well, in this case, I'm certainly not going to. In this case, I'm bouncing it back to the person who sent it to me and just simply with a note saying, it's your keyboard. And then they will go, why, why, why me? And they'll probably jump out the window or something like that. But no. Um, yeah, there's basically nothing I can do here. It's a shame they actually didn't check first before they sent it because I probably would have told them just to try, you know, disconnect the keyboard to see what happens. Um, now, I'm going to show you what I've done with Flexboard View to stop the people from annoying me. Oh, no, I've lost my... There we go. Let's see. Okay, so here we go. Flexboard view. And people read the trash. Funny, I've got an iPhone 5 there, but no one's... And you get down, blah, 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 blah. So you get to the purchase situation. And throughout the whole page, I've got board views are not supplied. Schematics are not supplied. See, no schematics or board views. And it's elsewhere up the page. All sales are final because I don't like people asking for refunds. I sort of give them a chance. They can try open board view first to see if it suits them. And they can watch places like Lewis and other people using it. So, um, yeah, there's plenty of ways to verify it probably is the tool they want. Anyway, so, yeah, if you don't like these policies, do not purchase software. I'm not making any apologies to them. And then we get to this bit here, like, to make sure they understand there is no board views with it it's like I have to ask the question does it come with the schematics and if they go yes and they think I'll oh, tick this box and agree with everything that it says it won't activate the you can't click it like no good but if you go no and then I've got a my code's not perfect so sue me uh, yep Ha ha ha, well, I haven't got my toggles right. Let's do this right. No, click it, 
okay and then you can get the button so so yeah it's it's just ridiculous that no matter how many times you try to tell people that there's no board views or schematics they can still get through what the previous process where they had to confirm twice it wasn't enough so I had to add another layer just left you a note oh yeah about yeah I have to just fix up the toggles I only just did this tonight yeah. Well, we're talking about AS four hundreds. People still use those. I know they're they're a good machine. They're a good database machine. Very good data throughput capacity. Jason, ah, uh, you only sent it. I was wondering what had happened, but I figured, hey, you know, I'm not complaining. You've got your work to do, so you know, not going to message you and say what's going on. Because I figured, hey, when you get around to it, if you get around to it, that's all going to be good and fine. I'm not going to harass you for it. Uh, not for something like that. But I appreciate you letting me know. They also make a nice living room table. Yeah, if, if you get the that size one, yeah. Because I know back in um, the late 90s, we could get anything from like just a little desktop. It was like a full... PC tower all the way up to a couple of fridge size ones uh, depending on what level you went with you want some overflow work um, right now I think I'm probably going to have to hold on that because I've got to clear out I've got 12 slots filled and they're all like wagging tail type faults where you know it's it's not just simple in and out you got a bad backlight driver chip it's all little niggly stuff that will clear up maybe by the end of next week I might let's see so to reiterate flex board view comes with no schematics or board views yeah <laughs> yep this one's about the size of two full suitcases side by side and weighs a bit more there that they certainly do I love the fact that with them that you could you know swap out the CPUs, swap out the RAM, swap out the drives, all while it was just running, and it was um, very convenient in that respect. Yeah, we, we got a king in here. Hmm. All right, all right. Well, this is um, holy crikey! It's one a.m. in the morning. Okay, no, it is time for me to go. Sorry, we didn't do any soldering. We did not get the hot air hot. We did not get the soldering iron hot, but. At least we got to yank out a battery with the um, nice 0.6. I'll put this link up on my um, tools page. That is definitely good stuff. Definitely good stuff. Just got to get some handles for it. And of course, thank you very much to Rescue Mark for the screwdrivers, which I am going to have to buy another set for so that I've got my one for the workshop and one for the road. Just make wood handles and sell it. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, um, single use or whatever. Give them a length of string that long. And when they break it, they got to buy a new one. Sounds like an excellent marketing model. All right, I'm out of here. You all take care. Thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Um, certainly feel free to share and click like or click thumbs down twice if you like to, just to make sure I really get the message. And subscribing is always good for me too because that pushes me up in the YouTube ranks and make sure that other people get to see it. Okay, appreciate it, and I'll see you maybe tomorrow. Until then, you'll take care. Catch us later.